housekeeping rules. Wonderful. So welcome to this session of International Women's Day celebrating with the Muslim Council of Britain, um, with yours truly. I'm hoping to share a little bit about my experiences being the first female and the youngest Secretary General, but also an opportunity to have a little bit of discussion with all of you young girls and ladies too. Just a little bit of housekeeping. And this session is being recorded. <clears throat> so um, just please be mindful if you want to share anything um, that this will be kind of pushed out on our social media channels as well. And also a very special thanks to our sponsors, uh, the National Zakat Foundation, Al Khair Foundation and Oasis, um, who've helped us put on this event together today. So if you have joined and you would like to share a little bit about yourself, please do put that in the chat. And if everyone could just be mindful to stay on mute, uh, that would be really good to do, uh, to do as well. So Bismillah rahman rahim um, So sharing just a very quick reflection on International Women's Day, um, which is a global event marked by communities, organizations, I mean, you name it, everybody's celebrating. And I think it's a really, really important moment for us to reflect on how far we've come collectively as Muslim women in our communities, as young girls, um, and also how far we need to go in terms of that journey that waits ahead for us too. So I wanted to begin by sharing a very, very short um, introduction and reflection on my own story, um, and then sharing a little bit about what's made me confident in that process. So for those of you who know, um, two years ago, I was elected as the first female secretary of the Muslim Council of Britain. And for me, that was a huge, uh, well, it was a huge change to my life, first of all, but also it was an international story and a huge story because people really just couldn't believe it. And today isn't really to talk to you about the stuff that you already know about that story, but maybe to share a little bit more of a personal journey of what it meant as a young woman taking on such a big role and some of the challenges that I personally faced in even going for the role in the first place, but also in what it meant for women to do it and to be elected and now re-elected to. Um, so I guess it all kind of starts at the beginning in which I always felt that there was a need for and a space for Muslim women to be more actively involved in community work and community space, but I couldn't really fit in anywhere there. And during my kind of university years, I actually saw that there was more of a scope to get involved and to do something. And the wonderful thing about life is Allah always opens lots of doors for you when you least expect it. <laughs> and opportunity always comes to you when you least expect it. And so one of the really great things about that journey um, was how much um, me, you know, I wasn't actively looking for leadership, but it just kind of came. And I wasn't actively looking for a position or for special treatment or definitely not to be on any posters, but it just came. And so people always say to me, well, you know, did you ever imagine that you could be the Secretary General of the MCB? And I was thinking, no, because <laughs> I had never, A, I didn't know what on earth the Secretary General was when I was in university or even when I was in school. But secondly, I didn't see myself actually as a leader. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we have, especially young women have, is seeing themselves in a place that they haven't seen anybody else like them. You know, that is really just on the head. You know, once you see it, you believe it. But when you can't see it, you definitely can't believe it could be you. And so my journey has been full of lots of ups and downs and turns and most importantly, lots of doubt, not believing that I could actually do it. So this International Women's Day, I wanted to share with you um, some of the key things that actually made me push ahead and do it. And so I'm just going to go back to the slide here before I do delve. So this session actually is going to be more of a workshop than me just talking at you and telling you my life story. I just give a bit of an introduction. And so what I wanted to share very quick in five to seven minutes is what makes me confident. You know, my journey is one in which I embarked on a crazy idea <laughs> through, uh, through lots of encouragement and support. But I wanted to talk to you about what makes me confident, you know, not just how I got here, but what made me persevere. And I think it'd be great for those of you to share in the chat what made you persevere. You know, how did you keep pushing through? 
The second thing is I'm, I'm going to make you do an exercise as well. So I hope you have a pen and paper handy because you are going to be taking part in a bit of an activity um, this afternoon and uh, this evening for our workshop. And then finally, we're going to have a bit of a QA. and um, So we've got the Q&A feature on here. And obviously, there's the chat. And we've got a couple of um, co-hosts that we'll be checking. So if you can, uh, please do stay on mute. Um, but do just put in your questions and we'll have a huge kind of half an hour section for that. So that's kind of the intro part done. Um, but let's get to the what makes me confident, because I think critically, many of us, I don't know if some of you are young girls in school, some of you might be teenagers, some of you might be at university, maybe some of you are older ladies <laughs> and whatever you're coming from, confidence is a big issue. And what I've learned in life is you're always struggling with this. You actually are never at a place where you're fully confident, you know? And for me, for some reason, really high pressure situations make me more confident. Um, not everybody works like that. That's not healthy for everybody, but confidence is really important. And I've purposely chosen an image here because this is what I see when I look around. <laughs> you know, everybody has a view of the world and my world is rather pink and colorful and full of lots of optimism and promise. And that is why I've shared that because what makes me confident, number one, is how I view the world and how I view myself in it. So when you think about your story of who you are and how you view the world, I want you to think about what does it look like? Is it always gray? Is it always grim? Is it always hard? Is it a giant mountain? Is it a stormy cloud? Is it the people in your life that are always telling you something? Is it your family? Is it your home? What is it you see when you're thinking about what makes me confident, how I see the world around me? And for me, what made me take on the role of Secretary General, even just to go for it, was the possibility of a different kind of world and a world in which there was lots of difference and color and excitement. And I knew it was going to be tough, but it also seemed really exciting and fun. And this idea of like curiosity and excitement got me really excited to think, what if I could be the person to help create a different world, a world in which actually we just did things differently and we could benefit lots of people, build lots of houses, support lots of people, but we could bring communities together. So my first advice for building self-confidence is number one, assessing your worldview and checking how I see the world. Is, it, is the glass half full, half empty? Is it positive? Is it negative? What does it look like? The second thing when I think about what makes me confident, so the first thing is really about having a, a, a good positive attitude. The second thing is about the people around me. And the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, you are on the religion of the five people that are closest to you. Now, if we look about it, if we think about it in our real world, that's the five people you WhatsApp the most, snap the most, you follow on Instagram, you follow on your feed on Facebook, for those of you who, you know, it is the five people that are constantly in your feed that you are listening to, that you are thinking about, that you're engaging with. Who are they? Who gets the most time, the most air time? Because that really impacts your confidence, how you feel about yourself and how you also feel about your opportunities. So I remember at school, there were some people, um, they're just really negative all the time. And they just wanted us to I actually had this moment where there was a group of girls who wanted me to only be exclusive to them. <laughs> and I didn't really like that. I like to play with everybody. So they just said, no, we're, we're not going to hang out with those other girls. We just want to stick, stick by who we know. And being the rebel that I am, I refused to cooperate and hung out with everybody. And what I learned about myself is I don't like the group think. I don't like to just do what everybody else is doing. But look, not everybody's like that. Some people, we like to be in a group. And all of us, I guess, do like to be in a group, but we like to be in a group of people that we can relate to. So my second thing that about confidence is about being around like-minded people. Not people that just agree with everything I say, but with people who help me be a better version of myself, to be more confident, to be more enthusiastic, more energetic, and to help me dream a little bit bigger. And my third point in terms of what makes me confident, what makes me confident is also about winning. <laughs> and I don't like to use this term winning as in, you know, oh, winning and losing or success and failure, but don't we all feel good when we've achieved? And inside of me, there's always this desire to, to achieve, 
to do something, to build something, to grow something. Uh, it's interesting. Someone said to me, um, nobody ever told the tree to stop growing. Right? Nobody ever told the tree to stop growing. So if you think about it, why do we limit ourselves? Why do we limit like what we're able to do or achieve? I can't do that. I don't know this. You know, I'm not an expert. I haven't got the knowledge. I'm not aware. And so when I talk about winning, I mean, giving yourself the chance to succeed, giving yourself the thinking that why can't I and being strong enough and bold enough to go for it. And throughout my whole journey as secretary general, I've had to give myself the chance, knowing that even though I was really, really different from everybody else, there was a possibility that I could do it as long as I tried. So I think my third bit of advice is give yourself the space to win and to feel good about it. And then the fourth one is the opposite of that advice, which is give yourself the space to make mistakes and not punish yourself for it. I think being confident is also about being confident about learning and growing and knowing that you are going to have some bumps along the way. And it's okay to do that because Allah said, you know, if, if we didn't make mistakes, he'd just replace us. So making mistakes is part of what makes us human. So you have to have that quality in you that you can't be perfect. You're not an angel. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to just do everything without you know being flawless. Actually the mistakes are where the learning is and where the growth is. So how you perceive failure or not doing well or things not working out, um, that's all really important part of your growth as well. So giving yourself the space to make mistakes and to learn and to grow is really, really critical. And then my final bit of what makes me confident before I give you all a task to do, and we'll do some sharing as well. I think what makes me confident is having faith. Probably my number one, but I kept the best to last. Having faith is so, so important because as humans, we really crave to be in control, to be in charge, to have all the answers, um, to hope that we're going to be able to, to fix it or to make it or to pass or whatever these things is that we really hope to do. But the wonderful thing about having a in your heart and your mind and conscious in everything that you do is it's a reminder to you that actually someone else, Allah, is taking care of you all the time. All you have to do is ask. And so what made me really confident to be the secretary general was I just, Allah, I just ask Allah, can you help me? Can you show me? Can you guide me? Can you take care of me? And even today, still doing that. And, and what you find is that it's such a wonderful way to stay connected. And that's through your prayer. That's through your Quran. That's through in giving charity. Uh, that's through in the relationships that we have, the people that we talk to. So all of these things are really super important because Faith teaches you you're not in control. Allah's in control. Faith teaches you that you don't need to be perfect. Faith in the prophetic example and the stories that we learn, but also the good character that we have, that being honesty, being honest is really important, that helping others along the way. You know, when I feel sad and when I don't feel confident, I just call someone and say, okay, what's going on in your life? You know, they say, if you want to be, a, um, if you want good friends, be a good friend. You know, if if you desire something in your life, like embody it in who you are. So my final bit of advice is keep faith close to your heart and cherish it because that's the most important part of this whole journey. So that's my little top tips for now. Um, and I hope we're all ready for a little group activity. So please, <laughs> emojis up. Uh, you're going to need a pen and a paper. And if you have a crayon, why not? Um, I'm going to be asking you two questions. And then if people are up for sharing, good. If not, I can just talk through it. If you want to put some stuff in the chat, that'll be really good as well. And the purpose is I thought, let's do a bit of a workshop. I could talk, talk to you and talk to you, but you could just watch my stuff on YouTube now. <laughs> um, so part of International Women's Day is helping to support one another to grow, is letting go of our biases, our assumptions, but also helping push people up. So I hope that my tenure in, in the next two years is really about amplifying and supporting lots of women in our community. So, right, question number one, what is stressing you out right now? And I want you to write the top three things. What is stressing you out right now? So let's write it down. Um, you could also draw it in the shape of a monster. <laughs> if there's something that is uh, really, if anybody wants to, which might be quite fun. 
But uh, yeah, what is stressing you out? What are the three monsters that are really annoying you right now? That's playing heavily on your mind. That's bothering you. It's making you feel um, quite stressed, quite un unrelaxed. Um, and also be really nice if people do want to share a little bit about themselves in the, the chat. And I'll just stop sharing so we can see who we've got on here. Okay. I saw lots and lots of you guys, which is really great. And give me a little thumbs up once you've done that. And I know not everybody here is a lady, so feel free everybody to participate. Okay. Um, yeah, good. Brilliant. Yeah, we've got another one. And if you guys do want to come on camera, no problem at all. We've only got about 30 of us on, so it'd be nice to maybe see some human faces. But hey. Okay, great. Lovely. Oh my gosh, isn't that so nice? I think sometimes it's a bit scary talking to yourself. It just feels really bit uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So let's see some faces. And we've all done something. What's stressing you out? Has anybody drawn a monster? Because I think that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we should like embody our stresses into a face. Okay, have we got everybody's? I mean, I hope everybody's participating because you have to participate. Okay, great. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. Okay, so the next question is, what makes you feel confident? And I want you to draw it like a superhero. <laughs> what does your superhero look like? What is that thing that makes you feel strong, confident, and good about yourself? I do like this, don't you think? Because <laughs> she's kind of hijabi, but she's kind of not. <laughs> so it's very inclusive. And she's rocking this power red outfit. I think all of this works, to be honest. I don't know if it could work in the MCB. Mariam, what do you think? Would we get away with this? <laughs> I'll stick it on the wall in the office. I think we would. Brilliant. Uh, let's see we've got yep Hibba's done great okay excellent so it makes you feel confident if you draw top marks for drawing it because that'll be epic okay good let's see we've got a few more great okay and we've got 30 on Okay, excellent. So I think we might open it up now to the floor to go through what everybody said. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, so I'm going to first pick on Mariam because she's part of Team MCB <laughs> and she's going to introduce herself as well. So Mariam Hassam, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, who you are? Thank you. Um... No, so my name is Mariam Hassan, and I think Zara loves putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> and to be fair, uh, I've just joined uh, this team, and I look really forward to being able to get to know some of you more um, and just hear about things that make you confident. Um, like I put on my chat, I'm doing my master's at the University of Birmingham, and I am really stressed about my assignment because I can always find something other to do than the assignment that I'm supposed to. But I think attending university really makes me feel confident. I feel like when I'm saying something, I feel like being at university doing um, this really helps me. So there goes uh, Zara. My okay. Own. And I just created a really quick. My <laughs> <horrible. laughs> We're not judging. <laughs> yeah. I love that you have shared some creativity today. Did you do a monster? No, I didn't do the monster. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Right, ladies, who would like uh, to share something with us both today? Anybody want to share? I can see Hania, you've got your camera on. Is it okay to pick on you? You want to share it? Yeah. So I'm going to add you to the spotlight. Do you want to just introduce yourself and then tell us what you wrote about your superhero and your monsters? 
Oh, we can't hear you, Hania, sorry. I think maybe the mic is covered. That's it, yeah, it's over there. <laughs> I think you need to bring it forward. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, there you go. Um, my name is Hania, um, and I kind of made a monster as well um, to show what kind of stresses me out. Mine's a, kind of like society, like social media stuff, and the exams that I have because I'm doing my GCSEs. And I think you were right when you were talking about having faith. I think every day when I wake up with the hijid and I pray and I'm like, I just want what's best for me. I think that kind of gives me all the faith and encouragement I need. And when I go to school, I feel good about myself because I can see the potential that I can have and my grades, alhamdulillah, are going up amazingly. So, yeah. Okay, amazing. So what's stressing you out is like the social media. Is that the, you don't know what, you know, people talking and so much going on. Yeah, but I'm what not really you... a part of social media. So like when I see new stuff, I'm like, okay, like, is this something everyone's doing? Or is it just, you know, it's confusing as well. And then, but what gives you confidence is like achieving and doing I'm well and yeah. focus and faith, mashallah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And do you want to tell us where, where you are right now? What city are you in? <laughs> I'm in uh, Warsaw town. I'm actually in Darliston and I'm oh sure goodness. you'll be around soon. Yeah, I'll be coming yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming tomorrow. So, okay, amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for sharing. Can we give her a clap or emoji <laughs> clap? Because it takes a lot of courage to share that. Thank you so much, Hani, and I hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, amazing. So does anybody else want to share um, what they've come up with? Can we see? Oh, lots of claps. You're getting lots of claps. Okay, who wants to come on next? Do we have a hand up? I see Heba. Heba, <laughs> would you like to share? No, Heba is her mother. Oh, <laughs> Nori. Nori, would you like to share? No problem. It's for moms and girls. Sorry, my, my camera's quite poor. So it's, That's uh, fine. We we'll keep it on audio. Um, yeah, um, starting with confidence, I like talking <laughs> to other people. <laughs> so I went to an event over the, the weekend and it was just getting to know people. So um it was like an icebreaker thing and they said the person who talks to people most and finds something in common they get a prize so uh and guess who who, who won the prize <laughs> so it was lovely it was a nice sort of like islamic event with all the ladies and gentlemen and um yeah i got um a ramadan book so i was very 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 happy with that so obviously faith is very important to me um what stresses me out is just basically my old age my health <laughs> so I think, you know, just having the aches and pains as you get older. Um, and the other thing is the cost of living. That's the other thing that's getting to me, you know, just bills, bills, bills. Lots that, of, mm. The same with a lot of people. I think so too. I think it's really difficult. But I mean, look, it's a bit of a big win that you won the networking prize. And <laughs> that, you know, you. I think the thing about the stresses is that if you focus on them, they just eat you up. So at least you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and doing something. Uh, we got a nice uh, message on the chat. Hi, my name is Faria and I work for the City of London. My top three stresses, family. We're in a lot of pain from the loss of my father. Marriage. Um, I'm 32 and not married, struggling to find someone suitable in work. Demands from the work-life balance. That's, that's quite a lot to think about. That's a lot of pressure and definitely a lot to consider. So I think what's really important is, but well, what are the, what's the opposite? I think we need to hear the opposite side of what are you doing to push yourself through and to keep yourself strong and focused. And the thing about all of these, and the reason that I wanted to bring all, all you ladies together and young girls as well, is that there is a lot of pressure on us all to deliver and a lot of pressure on us all to have the answers and to be able to fix it all. But I think everything that happens to us is part of Allah's design. And so it's so important that we see tests and trials as a purification, a cleansing, a cleanser. I know it's really easy for us to say, me to say, you know, but also to know that like Allah's not going to give you anything you can't handle. And hopefully, I'm looking forward to hearing your strengths, but to know that you're not alone. We'll all make him do for you as well, inshallah. 
Um, Amna's got her hand up. Amna, would you like to share something? Salam alaikum. Um, alaikum salam. I'm confident for being organized and I'm also confident for being able to speak up in front of people. My gosh. Amna, how old are you? I'm 12. Are you 12? And yeah. Are you, how, are you, how are you finding school? It's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. So you so today you have achieved a really big thing because you spoke to all of us and we're all going to give you an applause, Amna, <laughs> a virtual applause. Well done. Thank you. Amna, have you got any advice for me as the Secretary General? Um, being organized. Okay. Being organized. What makes you feel good? So you, you feel good because you're organized? Yeah, I'm going to plan my day ahead. For 12, that's very impressive. Amna, we might be hiring. We'd love to have your support on the team if you're available. Yes, I am. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Tell your parents, uh, thank you so much. I will be in touch. And thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. And we've got, is it Asia or Asia? Would you like to share something? Oh, assalamu alaikum. alaikum yeah, I'm just trying to mute myself. Um, yes, I'd like to just share. There was a sister that put on the chat. Um, she's struggling. I'm just going to go back. What was her name again? Um, um, the one, oh, Faria, that's it. Um, I just want to say, um, you know, if I, I could share my mobile number if she'd like to reach um, out maybe best just personally direct message yeah just, this is i'm a chaplain i'm a chaplain so i could help oh, that's perfect so maybe pop that in the chat just because it's a recorded okay. i don't think you want everybody to have your mobile number yeah. and anything you want to share about yourself or what makes you feel strong or what stresses yeah, I, you? what stresses me out is like meeting deadlines because when you have so many tasks you have so many deadlines and it does stress you a bit but being organized and yeah, so it does help. But I agree with that sister before, I like to talk, <laughs> talk a lot as well. <laughs> uh, no, you. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you for your offer of support as well. So please direct message and, and hopefully um, this is a, actually a really great platform to share that. Uh, does anybody else wanna share anything? Any monsters or superheroes? I'm just going to go through the chat and see if we've got anybody else. Okay, so um, on that note then, whilst you're here, Mariam, and I've got you on screen, <laughs> I wondered if you wanted to share with our audience, I know I was, it's tea with the SG in the evening, um, maybe we can both share a moment in which we felt really strong and in which we felt really challenged. And I wondered if you wanted to share a moment in which uh, might be useful for the other ladies and girls here in which you had to do something really difficult, but then you found a bit of courage to overcome it. Is there a moment that comes to mind? Yeah, thank you, um, Zara. I suppose uh, something that comes to my mind um, is when I was a trustee at the mosque um, and I had a lot of other male trustees. And I think it was a time when there was just two of us that were female uh, trustees. And I think it can be really challenging to sort of try to find my space, find my voice. Um, and I think that was something that I really took away with me. So my passion is mental health, um, just to, sort of, I'm a mental health trainer. And I think I was trying to organize something for the mosque, um, some awareness, and, and I was getting a lot of sort of pushback. Um, but I, when I was able to, to achieve it and have a pizza um, and a talk with um, about mental health, that was something that I felt really proud of. I felt like yeah, that was something really um, that I was really proud of being able to do. Um, so that was something I, I really felt challenged, but was able to accomplish. Um, and sometimes it is. Sometimes it feels like this is going to be so hard. But I think on the flip side, after I left, there were four women that were able to go into trustees and they've been able to do so much. I feel like I was able to do that one uh, well-being program and um that, that took a lot of time and effort but like after this the the four women are doing so well so sometimes we just have to go over some of those barriers or blocks but they open up things for a lot more other women and a lot more other people to do 
You're brilliant. I'm going to maybe share a quick story as well, and then I hope we can get um, a bit of a Q&A going so you can ask us or ask me anything that you like. So I wanted to share with you um, two moments in my life in which I was absolutely petrified <laughs> to do something, and, the, and then I did it. And the first was the first time I ever did public speaking. And this was in university, and I didn't really believe that I could do any kind of public speaking. So I think hands up if you're scared of public speaking. <laughs> I was and I was one of those people. And so you can imagine, I'm a first year student. I've joined all the clubs possible, and um, one of the clubs decided uh, they asked me to read out like this flyer. It was about kind of anti-racist protest or whatever. I said we want you to stand in front and read it out, or just give it to the lecturer. So I go in, and this lecture has. 500 students all sitting there staring um, and I'm just first year university student so I pass it to my lecturer and I said look can you read this out and he says no I think you should do it and I said eh, no 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 can you can you just read it out please because um, I, I can't do that he says no 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 I, I think you should do it it would be better coming from you then in the split second I had to make a really big decision and I said uh okay so I stood in front my hands were completely shaking. My heart had left my chest. It had gone out the room. And my heart's beating really fast. And I'm standing there in front of everybody. And I just start talking. I actually don't remember what I was saying at all. I just remember saying that, you know, I really hope you'll support it and we need to do something. So I just was just, there was just words coming out. And then all of a sudden I had finished and there was this tiny second of silence. And then they all applauded. And everybody clapped, 500 people were clapping. So I'm standing there and I like deer in the headlights, Bambi, everybody's clapping for me. And I've just done my first ever public speaking. I sat down, I was not, I didn't understand anything that was going on after that point. I just sat down thinking, oh, and did I just do that? Am I a public speaker? <laughs> did that just happen? And I realized in that moment that I never would have known I could do that unless I put myself in a position where I did do that. And I never imagined in my life that I would stand in front of people with a message and communicate it. And I found that that story was actually really, really important for all the other moments in my life. And the second moment I want to share with you is the moment that I got elected as Secretary General, that specific moment. Because within one hour, I became this huge public figure, Twitter following, Instagram following. People were just checking, checking Zara Mohammed. People wanted to know everything about my life. Who is this girl? What is she about? But it, but the phones were going crazy. And I could feel myself thinking, oh, wow, what is happening? And I actually remember that moment when I first did the public speaking because BBC wanted me live at six. Um, So-and-so wanted me live. Guardian, everybody wanted a piece of me. And I was then live on TV at 6 p.m. within hours of being elected. I'm live on TV. I mean, I've done all the phone interviews, which were maybe just slightly doable because I just said, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm honored, you know. But the TV interview was frightening because I couldn't see anyone. So it's a Zoom screen. It's just black. It's just me with my flowery wallpaper at home with some lighting, you know. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, Zara, you've just been elected to this huge role do you understand what's happening and I was thinking no I don't understand what's happening <laughs> but in that moment I had to deliver I had to present as the secretary general and again I did it and I thought to myself wow you know how on earth did I do that and I think what I learned was until you push yourself out of your comfort zone you'll never really know what you're good at um, until you really see you know yourself in more ways than you because we limit ourselves because we believe well I'm a doctor I can only be a doctor I'm a teacher I can only be a teacher I'm in this space I can only be that or I'm very quiet so I can't be confident when I'm public speaking you know um, so someone's just asked what are your tips when giving presentations to avoid getting nervous and this is a really good question so look people have lots of different styles some of us write your bullet points down some of us need to write a script and rehearse it and memorize it to a mirror which is a really good idea and some of us this is people like myself we need to understand what we're talking about in a deeper way and connect it with stories so what I would say is take some time to think about what you want to say to the audience take some time bullet points messages cards script whatever it is you need 
then use stories and examples and make it a little bit personal. So for example, one of the this you know talks that I did at school was about I think Nelson Mandela or Malcolm X, you know, these kind of prominent figures. And I had the little note cards and I memorized them. But I remember the minute I kind of stopped looking at the cards and I just thought about what I was talking about and what it meant to me, I connected to the audience much better than when I was just reading. So try and avoid reading a script like this. Make eye contact, slow it down, take a deep breath. And the best thing I could say to you is the audience already loves you. They just love you. <laughs> so if you go into the mindset that everybody is already, they can't wait to hear what you've got to say. <laughs> that helps too. Uh, you might go into rooms where you're not entirely sure they're all waiting to hear what you've got to say. Uh, but another way of looking at it is Allah's blessed you with a voice or a skill or a message. Um, so don't lose the moment. Uh, but there'll always be more opportunities. So start small, put your hand up in class, ask a question, write it down, take a deep breath. Remember, it's okay to make a mistake. These all help yeah. a lot. Um, and what I learned is that when I became Secretary General, it's harder and harder because I was talking so much all the time for all the talk talkaholics in this room. I have to talk a lot, but I have to listen even more. And the great way to be a great communicator is to listen. And to understand what the other person is trying to tell you before you start telling them everything you need to get out. Uh, so those are just some of my tips. So we're on the Q&A portion of this session, ladies. Does there anybody have any questions they want to ask in terms of confidence building, things they're struggling with, things they'd like to get support with? Uh, you can ask the question live or you can put it in the chat. We can also take a deep breath together. I think we should do that. Very nice. Should we take a deep breath together? <laughs> In a minute. Rabia, you want to ask something? Uh, hello, Assalamu alaikum. alaikum uh, so sometimes we make a face problem in our work, like, uh, like some people are there. You can't do this and they are degrading us at some point, even though if you're doing a duty, let's say if you're finishing the task in every day, and then sometimes we may get lower confidence that we can't do this one, even though we are um, submitting the task, what we are doing. Um, so sometimes we may have faith in Allah that we could do it. But uh, if he doesn't know what to do at some point, um, if there is no one to help us, we may feel con uh, less confident in that point. So how could we cope that situation? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And I can understand that um, uh, it can be very difficult sometimes when you've got lots of critical people around you or people who aren't very supportive or don't recognize or appreciate what you've done. And I think what's what's really yeah. important yeah. is is first to, yeah. you, you know, that like, we get lots of feedback in our life, don't we? We get lots of feedback. Yeah, and some, absolutely. some feedback yeah. is helpful and some feedback is not helpful. And what I always do is I yeah. take I take the understand. Yeah. I, oh, I'm just gonna put yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing that I always make sure I do is first think, did I do my best? Did I try? You know, so first I assess myself. Where am I? What did I do? And did I put my best effort in? The second thing I'll do is I'll listen to the feedback and think, is there some learning for me in this feedback? Who's giving me the feedback? Where are they coming from? Are they being objective or the subjective? And thirdly, I would have faith that, look, as long as you put the effort in and you try, people are always going to have an opinion on it. But if you're delivering a good result, if you're delivering a result and you're helping or you're performing, then that's one thing. But your actual underlying issue is less about what people think of you, but more about what you think about yourself. And what's taught me really an important lesson in life is, you know, my mother said it to me, she goes, be your own. Um, marker for success don't compare yourself to others mm -hmm. don't think about what others are saying focus on yourself and how you can beat your last best so when I what I would say to you is if you're around an, if you're in an environment where people maybe don't make you feel good then find others who can give you good feedback be confident in your own self and your own ability mm -hmm. and remember that like this is just a process and that, inshallah you, you know as you grow on you'll learn to know what feedback is good what feedback you don't need to listen to and what feedback is going to help you grow but remember to have your own self-confidence first and, and to believe in yourself too. That's really important. Um, we've got some other questions. I was going to say, Mariam, is there anything you wanted to add to that one? 
Yeah, exactly for that. So yeah, sometimes may feel confident. Thanks for answering my question. Okay, brilliant. I think, uh, uh, sometimes the people might judge based on our um, uh, communication or maybe accent or attitude, whatever it is. Um, so they, um, we feel okay. confident that we we may expose our talent not to every not to show any everyone. We, instead, we are talking to our inner heart that we can do it. So it's if I can do it. So no one can do it, right? If no one can do it, I can do it. So that that's why uh, I am motivated every time. At least, uh, at least some other day, maybe I could do better than this day. That's what I'm just aiming for. Brilliant. That's it. have pancakes every day. You know, that's the fun. just you know feel good about yourself first, and then worry about others. Um. So we've got um two more questions, and then maybe Mariam, you can come in on these ones. It should be really helpful. And thank you so much, Rabia. Um. How do you unwind after a really busy day or period? Very good question. And what's the most important quality a leader can have? Oh, two very excellent questions. So Mariam, do you want to take the first one while I think about how I unwind? Sure. I was I was just thinking um, they're brilliant questions, especially about after a busy day. And I love that stroke period because um I know when I've gone through a really busy period, what I need to do is just just give myself some time. And sometimes that means shutting myself off everything else that I need to be doing, just catching up on sleep and catching up on doing nothing and having a pajama day, because sometimes it can get really overwhelming, especially one of those uni assignments that I talked about. If they consume me completely or if I've gone through a period where I really have to be working hard. There are days then I just enjoy doing things that I really um, love doing. And that sometimes just spending some time with my children, um, cooking, uh, but also sleeping and having that pajama day is really big. I think for me, it's going for a really good walk and getting some fresh air. Nature is a wonderful thing. I think what nature does is it allows me just to remember how small I am in this really big world and that life will go on. I'll figure it out. and that in this vastness and beauty that I'm in, of course, there's going to be a way through. Um, obviously, faith and pray, prayer is so important, but also having a bit of fun. You know, those things called friends, <laughs> which I didn't see in a very long time. Social time, family time, creative time, organizing, cleaning, all can be wonderful things. So I think doing human things away from like what's stressing you out, but also just like having a bit of fun. Someone says, you know, you should never have a day without laughter. And I think, you know, when you laugh, it's really hard to be stressed out. So sometimes laughing at your problems can be a really good way to go. Um, and then the next question is around, what's the most important quality a leader can have? Uh, what do you think, Maria? I think it's the one that you talked about around listening. I think it's huge. Listening is huge. We might come with the leaders thinking that we know what needs to be done, but we don't know unless we've heard what, what the problem is from different perspectives. We might have a clue, of what's going on what needs to be done but I think uh, listening to what people tell us and, and what the grassroots tell us what groups like these tell us are so so important what do you think uh, yeah yeah I mean look I 100% agree with that I think courage is probably the one that I would go to I think you have to find some courage you know someone said to me they have nerves of steel well I don't know where you find those but you've got to have a lot of courage, mm -hmm. or even just a little bit sometimes, you know, that bit that just gets you up, makes you just just go ahead and live the day, or even tells you that, okay, you may have not got today, but you've still got tomorrow. And I think what courage does is it pushes us and pushes us. And sometimes you can really feel, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to figure this out? Or am I even going to go and do it? Like, you know, just taking that step. So courage is that little fire inside. Sometimes it's just a tiny bit. Sometimes it's a lot. And I found particularly in my role that it actually required me to be more courageous and to speak up, to say things, to actually say what I thought, which was quite a scary thing to do sometimes. So I think you're right. Listening so that you could absorb and really be reflective and understanding and then courage so that you could um, share it, do something, act on it. I've got another question. How do you avoid being the token Muslim hijabi in any professional context, either for other Muslim organizations or non-Muslims? Do you see this as a problem? So this is actually a very, very good question in relation to International Women's Day and particularly a challenge 
Muslim women face, especially if they're the only one or the only visibly Muslim women in a workplace or in an environment. Um, I think, I mean, I don't know, Mariam, did you want to come in on, you were literally, I guess, one of the, one of the few on your board. I think this is one of those really, like you mentioned, a really critical question. Um, and it's got three parts to it. I'm just looking at um, the, the part around being the Muslim or hijabi in a professional context. And then um, it could be or the, in a Muslim or non-Muslim, which is a nice thing to think about around the women and the, the, the sort of number of women that may or may not be wearing hijab, uh, but also is this a, program, a problem if we're a token? Uh, and I think this is a really interesting discussion around what it means tokenism. Um, and but my my view, which is a personal view, is sometimes you have to take the first step. Uh, I think going back to the example that I gave around the well-being, sometimes it is around being the first so that you can open the door for other people. Um, and I think being really uh, sort of clear in your own mind of what you want to do in that organization or in this professional role? What is it that you would like to achieve from it? Um, might just make you just aware of, of some of those opportunities that you can take on. Um, but I think that point around, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Having um, that voice and choice uh, might be something that you might struggle with, um, but someone has to do it. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's been a challenge even, I mean, I did a law degree as well. And, you know, I was the only Muslim woman, visibly Muslim women and my course. And then when I put my hijab on, you know, it was even like, so a pre, I wasn't wearing hijab before then I put my hijab on. So what I think is, it's really, really important that whatever you do, you own that space in your own way. And sometimes you also don't just see yourself. Like if you see yourself as a token, that's when it becomes really problematic. When you see yourself as able to leverage your difference. So for example, if you're the only Muslim there and you're able to secure a prayer room, that's going to benefit everybody. If you're the only Muslim woman there and you're able to help others understand about hijab or just a little bit about you know the religion or the faith, the community, that's also really beneficial to other generations. So sometimes there's there's being a token where you're just literally on the front cover of a website page, you know, that but there's also the flip side of that, which is I'm looking at jobs and I see you and I see you looking like me and I think wow I can work there so I think perception and how we look at it and attitude are really important to this topic and it's important that we empower the people both that we employ or ourselves to say well actually no I'm not a token um, some people called me a token being elected the first female she's a puppet what does she know and I was like no no I'm the boss I'm going to own the space but an example I'll give you is I was invited to a very big conference and they stuck me in the women in religion panel. And I said, no, um, sorry, but I'm not going to do that panel because that's, I'm not a woman in, I, I'm not representing just women. And I'm not just a woman in leadership. I'm a leader that represents all diverse communities, men and women. So for me, it was important not to be boxed in, in the spaces that I didn't need to be, but where I could provide a helpful voice for other Muslim women, like International Women's Day, where I'm celebrating. It's important for me to also push there. So I think, the question is all about perception. It can be problematic, but it's also about how you drive that conversation. And if people are making you feel tokenistic, then that's when you know, like, no, we're not having that. I won't be a token in this. And you use your voice. But at the same time, I think it's about leveraging it too. So it's a challenging one. I think it's probably one that we're all still figuring out. But um, never let others take your power. That's what I always think. Okay, um, question from Leila. Was it difficult at first to start wearing hijab and wearing it regularly? Huh. Oh, so for me, it was actually a, quite a big journey. I put my hijab on in Ramadan, felt like the right moment to do it. And I, you know, I was, I was already very practicing, but it was the one area that I just hadn't figured out what it was meant to be and how to do it. And um, I went to kind of a, uh, all white school and how many Muslim friends. So I was kind of really, really figuring out for myself, but it was important that it was a decision I made because of the relationship between me and Allah, me and God. That's what it needed to be about. And I didn't want to do it for others. I just didn't want to do it for others. And I think when I put it on, which was probably the easier part, wearing it actually, it's not that the hard bit. The hard bit is how you're going to be judged, how you're going to be looked at, how you're going to be treated. And I remember a friend saying to me, I can never wear that because I wouldn't get a job. 
And I guess she was right, because that's what the statistics say, that the most marginalized when it comes to employment are Muslim women. But my response was, well, I wouldn't want that job. So, so it's actually about your, you and what you think is important and what you value, because anything is difficult. Anything that we want to put our mind to is difficult. Being different is difficult. You know, having, you know, being a Muslim is, is difficult, but lots of things are difficult if you believe in them. But I knew that when I put it on, like, I couldn't ever imagine it otherwise. Like, it just, it had made me, it fulfilled what I was feeling empty inside. And that was just my story. But I think what it also helped me do was I understood the journey of those who didn't wear it. As I was judged for not being a hijabi before, and then I was judged for being a hijabi afterwards. <laughs> so I realized, okay, you can't win this one. Um, but for me, I think it meant um, being visible as a Muslim. And that came with challenges, you know, on public transport, where people look at you, even in law. I got kind of some discrimination from my colleagues who were really normal to me before, all of a sudden started to treat me really different. And I was thinking, wow, really? Um, but I think that's the process, right? Uh, I don't know, Mariam, if you had any reflections you wanted to share on just wearing the hijab and, and the challenges. So for me, I suppose my story is slightly different around, um, I was brought up in Africa, Tanzania, and um, it was quite very, uh, just the done thing, everyone who turned nine. So I think when I wore hijab, I was around 13. I was quite, like, I, I pushed the boundary as much as I could. I thought that was really big. Um, but when I turned 13, 14, um, it was more of community and everyone around me were wearing hijab. And I don't think that's the right reason to wear hijab, but I was just quite young um, at that time. But once I wore it, um, I think for me, what it gives for me is that just personal space. Like so many times I don't have to give my hand out to someone if I don't want to. It's just my hijab speaks um, quite, quite a lot about who I am and my personal space. I think that, and, and like you said, that relationship to, to God, because this is what he wants me to, to, to do. Um, and I think as, as at a certain age, when it feels right for you, um, that's the reflection I take over, that, uh, take with me, that that's the time that people should or shouldn't wear it. They shouldn't do it for the wrong reasons. It should be something that you choose to do for yourself um, and because of the journey that you're on. Mm, wonderful mashallah okay we got time for a last question uh, which is from Ghazia what are the biggest challenges that might across that might come across being in a leadership team oh well there's lots of challenges <laughs> lots of challenges um I guess working with different working with lots of different personalities and um, you'll find this in school university at work at home <laughs> um everywhere you go where there's collections of people you've got to figure out how to work with one another I think you should embrace that people have different approaches, but appreciate that we all got to have the same goal. So the first thing you got to do is understand how people communicate, how they like to work, but also that they are going to be different. They might be grumpier. They might not like be more introverted. They might want to just be independent working as opposed to always collaborating, always talking. Some of us extroverts have a problem with always being hyperactive all the time. Uh, and so we, the cool, calm ones just kind of help us mellow out. So I think there's lots of challenges, but the main thing you've got to think about is how you contribute and how you work with others to overcome that. Now, Mariam, any thoughts from you? No, I think you've really summarized that well around um, how is it as a team that we're going to deliver with all our differences? That's, that's a huge one. And I think uh, conversations, um, being aware that um, difference sometimes brings out wonderful solutions, right? As long as it's done in a right way, but that can still feel challenging at the time. So and yeah, just keeping that on the board. Brilliant. So I am going to just share uh, two very final slides with you all, and then we're going to wrap it up. So please do, if you have any final thoughts or reflections, uh, do share them. And I think it's just loading. So coming to the... Oh, Coming to the end of our little um, get together, I just thought let's share some top tips in terms of what have we learned this confidence building workshop celebrating International Women's Days. Well, look, number one, you got to like yourself. So that whole idea of being confident to be who you are is so important. Um, and until you do that, you're going to struggle because you're going to just want to be other people's version of yourself, not yourself. 
Um, secondly is having a really good support network or working towards having that. And that's the people that make you feel good about who you are, make you feel confident to be yourself. The third thing I would say is like ask for feedback. We're always in a process of growing and learning. So ask people like, do you think this is something I could work on? How do you think we did? Invite learning and growth. Um, finally, try and try again. Like don't give up, you know. Um, if you think about things a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, six, you know, think about how far we've come. We have actually come really far. And then finally, have faith. I think it's so important that um, as we look ahead, we're really optimistic about the future and what it holds. Um, so believe in yourself and believe that there is a bigger plan for you. And I think that Allah has bestowed a gift on all of us. And we're just in some ways sharing that gift every day as we go along. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this short and snappy session on International Women's Day. Um, thank you, everybody who shared a question, shared a thought. Um, well done to all of our young leaders who shared something today, especially who came on camera or audio. So congratulations. I hope everybody's had some really good celebrations for International Women's Day. I'm going to be traveling for this whole week, all the way up until Saturday. So you might catch me in a city near you. And I think if you can check our socials, you can see what we've been up to. And again, once again, a thanks to our sponsors uh, for helping make this event happen. And, and a very special thanks to Mariam, who uh, may have not known completely she was going to be talking so much today, <laughs> but has done a fabulous job anyway. Um, I think we should do a solidarity round of applause. Um, if you enjoyed today, please do give us some feedback and you can hashtag embrace equity at, MC, at Muslim Council and share with us how you found the session. But thank you so much for um, joining us this evening. Thank you. Okay, great. I will end Thanks, it there.